When it comes to coffee, no one does it better than Starbucks, and that's why their loyal customers go to their favorite Starbucks at least 16 times per month. With a great service to both employees and customers, the Starbucks family has set a new trend for what a company should be, a balance between profit and service. It's no wonder the Starbucks family has spread to 80 different countries employing over 180,000 people in their 32,000 stores. Even more interesting is the Starbucks origin story. Unlike most huge billion dollar companies, none of the key actors involved ever planned for something like what Starbucks has become today. For CEO and later owner Howard Schultz, Starbucks was not a dream he pursued. Rather, Starbucks was like love at first sight or better still, a love at first taste. It was a rather calm day in 1981 when Howard Schultz had come to fill an order for plastic cone filters. He then entered the Starbucks coffee company in Seattle, not knowing that his life would change forever. Starbucks started as a desire to show Seattleites what a great cup of coffee tasted like. Three men, Jerry Baldwin, Zev Siegel, and Gordon Bowker, met while they were at the University of San Francisco. Gordon and Jerry met while they were waiting in line to get their dorm assignments. The dorm was full and they both decided to go find an apartment. They soon became friends and in 1962, while working at a summer job in Seattle, Zev posted a notice asking for passengers to join him on a trip to New York. Gordon joined the ride and at a stop in San Francisco, Zev met Jerry and the trio became best buds. They remained so for many years, even after they left the university. Jerry left the army and got a job with Boeing and Zev was a teacher while Gordon was a writer. One day, while having lunch at a restaurant in Seattle, they noticed that their coffee tasted bad. Gordon then suggested that they start a coffee company and the other two liked the idea and that was enough. Starbucks was named after Starbuck, one of the characters in Moby Dick. The trio built their company and remained at the helm for 10 years. After many ups and downs, the company remained afloat. One day, a young man named Howard Schultz walked into their Seattle store. He was there to fulfill plastic cone filter orders on behalf of the coffee machine company, Hammerplast. Little did they know the perfect manager for their business had come. Howard D. Schultz was born on the 19th of July in 1953 in Brooklyn, New York. His father was a truck driver named Fred Schultz. Fred Schultz and his family were poor and they lived in the Canary Public Housing Projects. Schultz attended Canary High School and graduated in 1971. He then proceeded to Northern Michigan University where he graduated with a bachelor's in communications. After leaving the university, Schultz remained in Michigan. He worked at a ski lodge for a year before moving to Xerox where he worked as a salesman. The Swedish kitchenware firm PAI Partners employed Howard as the general manager of Hammerplast, one of its U.S. subsidiaries. He was in charge of Hammerplast U.S. operation. One day, he visited Starbucks Coffee Company in Seattle to deliver plastic cone orders, and after tasting their coffee, he was very impressed with the small company. He visited the company's roasting plant where he met Gordon and Jerry. Howard fell in love with Starbucks, and almost immediately, he wanted to own a piece of Starbucks. As fate would have it, that chance meeting would lead to a beautiful company that would go on to serve millions of people. For now, however, Howard had to convince the owners to hire him. While growing up, Howard had an experience that would change him forever. His father was involved in an accident and he became immobile. His father had no health insurance from the company where he worked and that left him in a terrible position. That experience would forever shape his philosophy on employee care. After visiting Starbucks roasting plant, Howard was sure he wanted to be a part of the company. To do that, Howard had to set up a meeting with the owners of Starbucks at a restaurant in New York. They met again in San Francisco. This time, the Starbucks board of directors was accompanied by a business consultant, Steve Donovan. Howard put on his best suit. Determined to impress the directors, Howard made a strong presence of his plan to increase the company's sales. He was full of charm and enthusiasm, so much that he was convinced that he had charmed the gentleman. He was now confident that he would be hired by this company. Unfortunately for Howard, he was turned down because there were reservations about hiring him. Howard was told no over the phone, but he wasn't having it. He immediately launched into a passionate defense of his proposal. Jerry went back to the others and they discussed Howard's offer again. This time they decided to hire him. With years of experience in the coffee business, Howard also had plans about how he could expand Starbucks. Hiring Howard Schultz seemed like a master stroke for Starbucks. For Starbucks, it was now game time, or was it? 
now Director of Marketing and Retail Operations at Starbucks, Howard Schultz visited Italy on a work trip in 1983. He went to a trade show where he tasted his first ever latte, and with that first cup, a new idea popped into his head, one that Howard believed that would make Starbucks an industry leader. Howard returned to Seattle with the firm belief that espresso was the future. Unfortunately, the owners of Starbucks didn't share Howard's optimism. That didn't deter Howard as he was determined to prove them wrong. While Howard was pushing for the espresso move, Jerry was focused on how to buy a premier specialty coffee company named Pete's. On October 1st, 1984, Starbucks completed the purchase of Pete's for a sum of $3.8 million. Unfortunately, Starbucks had gone into debt to be able to buy Pete's. This now put financial pressure on Starbucks. By 1986, Howard quit his job at Starbucks to form his own company named Il Giranali Coffee Company. He needed $400,000 to kickstart his company, and so he went searching for funds. He approached 242 investors, of which 217 turned him down. Starbucks then invested $150,000 in cash into Il Giranali, giving Starbucks a 20% share in the company. Starbucks also supplied roasted beans to El Giornale. Gordon, who was already working for other organizations, had very little time. He then decided to sell his stake in Starbucks. Unfortunately, this happened at a time when Starbucks was cash strapped. This put Jerry in further financial trouble and Jerry was confused and was now looking for a way out. He talked to several investment managers and venture capitalists and then he decided that selling one of the businesses was the way to go. After talking with his wife, Jerry decided that Starbucks would have to go as he wanted to remain at Pete's. Howard quickly raised $3.8 million and with that, he completed the purchase of Starbucks. Now head of Starbucks, Howard already had a plan in mind for how the company would expand. He first renamed El Giornale to Starbucks. He then started expanding Starbucks chains across the United States. Howard, who did not believe in franchising, made sure Starbucks was the owner of every outlet. Howard was a different kind of CEO, and many credit his unique leadership style with expanding Starbucks globally. As CEO, he put a major focus on employee health benefits. He also worked hard to transform Starbucks from a company into a social hub. Transformed by the experience of watching his father suffer without health insurance, Howard set out to build a company that would take proper care of its employees. According to Howard, I never set out to build a global business. I set out to build the kind of company that my father never had a chance to work for, one that treats all people with dignity. And true to his word, Howard transformed Starbucks into a company renowned for lots of employee benefits. Under his leadership, Starbucks became one of the first companies that took social responsibility seriously. The company became the first to offer healthcare benefits to its part-time workers, including their baristas. In fact, Starbucks spends more money on employee healthcare than it does on coffee beans every year. Starbucks famously refers to its employees as partners. In 2014, Starbucks partnered with Arizona State University to create a novel program to give Starbucks employees a college education that would be tuition free. Five years after its launch, over 3,000 Starbucks employees or partners have graduated thanks to the program. Starbucks even went further and became the first company to give stock ownership to all of its employees. And since the launch of that program, it has gone to generate over $1.5 billion for the company's baristas and managers. Of course, Starbucks' contribution to the community and their employees would not go unnoticed. More and more people began to join the Starbucks family. Demand for espresso skyrocketed. Soon enough, Starbucks started acquiring other beverage companies. They also increased their product offering to include other drinks. From the 1980s to the 1990s, Starbucks increased the number of outlets from 46 to 140. Its revenue also increased from $1.3 million in 1987 to $73 million in 1992. That same year, Starbucks went public. It sold 12% of its shares for $25 million, which the company used to double the number of its stores. By September 1972, the company's stock price had risen by 70%. Growth was rapid in the 1990s and the early 2000s. For Howard, it was time to step down. He now became the company's chief global strategist where he would focus on expanding Starbucks internationally. After stepping down as CEO, Howard Schultz helped Starbucks expand into other countries, especially China. By 2008, the financial crisis hit the world. This rapidly affected sales and growth of Starbucks. Howard Schultz then returned to the position of CEO to help change the company's fortune. 
Under his new watch, the company fired a number of executives, closed down hundreds of underperforming stores, and even retrained their employees in making an espresso. From 2008 to 2016, when Howard Schultz resigned, the company's market cap grew by nearly $100 billion. Howard retired from active management of Starbucks to pursue his other passions in writing and public speaking. Howard's management was a great boost for the company. Just a year after his resignation, Starbucks recorded a total revenue of $24.1 billion. Howard Schultz knew what it meant to be poor, and in his own words, I grew up in public housing on the other side of the tracks. I grew up with a level of shame, embarrassment, and vulnerability about what it meant to be poor. With hard work and perseverance, he turned Starbucks into a global coffee giant. Yet he never forgot what it was like to be poor. That's one of the reasons why Starbucks is unmatched in the benefits it offers to its employees. For more inspirational stories about the world's most successful founders and CEOs, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel.